Hello friends, welcome to UGPG Mathematics. In today's video, I will solve some questions from CSIR NET exam and these questions are from part C. So we need to be careful in solving such questions because in these questions more than one options can be correct. So let us see the question. We have given Px a polynomial in one variable of odd degree and g is a continuous function from r to r and we need to check which of the following options are true. The first option says that there exists there exist x0 in r set of all real numbers such that p of x0 is equal to g of x0 that means at point x0 the two functions are same. Then the second option is if g is polynomial then there exists x0 belongs to r such that p of x0 is equal to g of x0. Uh, now we have given this function continuous but this option says that if that is the polynomial then whether this is correct. Now the third option is g is if g is bounded function then there exists x0 belongs to r such that p of x0 is equal to g of x0 and the last option says that there is unique x0 in r such that p of x0 is equal to g of x0 so let us solve this now the first option says that there is exists such x0 right so this is not true because if you take that px which is a polynomial that to be x right it is a polynomial of degree 1 which is odd degree and you take gx as x plus 1 now it is a continuous function from r to r and now let us just draw the graph so p of x is equal to x means what it is just a line this y is equal to x. So this is our p of x. This is x and y axis. And this g of x is just a line x plus 1. So this line will be like this. Correct. Now just note that these two curves or these two lines does not intersect each other right so there does not exist such x0 belongs to r such that this p of x0 is equal to g of x0 right or you can just solve this equation suppose that p of x0 is equal to g of x0 then we will get x0 is equal to x0 plus 1 right but this says that 0 is equal to 1 which is a contradiction. So this is not true. This is a counter example for first option. Now the second option says that g if g is polynomial. Now just note that this g is again a polynomial. It is a polynomial of degree 1. Right. So the same option is also a counter example for this, this option. Right. So this same function gx you take and just note that p of x0 is not equal to g of x0 for any x0 in R. Now the third option says that there is unique x0 right such that this p of x0 is equal to g of x0 but here there does not exist such x0 right. So the question of uniqueness is not there right because there is no guarantee of this x0. So this is also not true. So this is also false. Now this first, second and fourth options are not true. So there must be one option, at least one option must be correct. So this third option is true. But let us see why this third option is correct. So here if you just note that, that p of x is we have given that is an odd degree polynomial but even if you take that p of x to be 
e1 degree polynomial then also you will get these uh, three options one two and fourth options are wrong because in that case you just take that p of x to be say some uh, polynomial p of x like this and take that g of x to be like this function which is a continuous function then also there does not uh, there is no x not such that p of x is equal to g of x not but here we have given a polynomial of odd degree right so we will use this fact effectively and also we have this function g is a bounded function so what is the meaning of boundedness if we have m positive number so let us fix this m then that g of x its modulus is less equal m for some m then we call this function is bounded by m so g is bounded we have given this sorry g is bounded implies this thing now this fact is used here now just use that this p of x is odd degree polynomial so let us just note that if that p of x is odd degree polynomial then that p of x is on to because uh, for example you can take x cube which is odd degree polynomial or any polynomial suppose we have a polynomial uh, with degree 3 then it will just look like this it has three roots right here here and here and as x tends to infinity it will tends to infinity and as x tends to minus infinity it tends to minus infinity and moreover this is a continuous function so there are no gaps in the graph of p of x and just note that this range of p of x is the whole y axis right so range is just minus infinity to infinity which is r that means this function p of x polynomial function is on to now just see here if that gx is bounded function then let me draw the graph or rough sketch for this suppose i have m here and so minus m will be here right now this is my x axis this is y axis now this function gx is in between these two lines right so it will look like something let us say uh, we have given this is continuous function so there are no gaps in the graph of this function it can be there may be corners in the function but just note that it is continuous function and like this now suppose that this function p of x is odd degree so it is on to right so let us just draw the graph so it will look like something uh, for example you take this graph so it is like this and so on so what are the intersection points it will be like this this so there exists such x naught right where these two graphs intersects each other now this is a graphical method so let us do it so uh, do some calculations to just verify this so you just consider a function say h h which is equal to p minus g now this both both these functions have domain as well as codomain r so h is a function from r to r now this function is on to so this h is on to or subjective function and just note that this p is polynomial so it is continuous function g is we have given the continuous function so this function h which is a difference of two continuous functions 
so it is continuous right and this is on to function so now just note that this zero is an element of r so i will take this zero and apply the fact that h is on to so there exists such x not in the domain this r such that h of x not is equal to zero right because it is on to so zero must have some pre image so h of x not is equal to zero means now my h is p minus g of x not which is equal to zero that means what p of x not is equal to g of x not right so i have this x not such that p of x not is equal to g of x not that means this is true right so important fact is we have this function g which is a bounded function right and also this p of x is polynomial of odd degree that's why it is on to otherwise just look at some p of x which is even degree then that that will look like something i will take this as x square plus 1 and take some g of x which is say a constant function so it will not intersect the graph of x square plus 1 right so this p of x is odd degree polynomial it is very important fact so the correct option is just the third option let us solve another question the question is also from part c and it is about sequence so we have given a n be a bounded sequence of real numbers then the first option says that every subsequence of a n is convergent the second option is there is exactly one subsequence of a n which is convergent the third option says that there are infinitely many subsequences of a n which are convergent and the last option says that there is a subsequence of a n which is convergent so let us solve this just note that this a n is a bounded sequence so so for the first option uh, you take the sequence a n as say minus 1 raised to n for n greater or equal 1 then just note that this sequence you can write this as a n is equal to start from 1 so it is minus 1 raised to 1 so minus 1 then square is 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 and so on right now just note that when you take a subsequence a n plus 1 then it will be minus 1 raised to n plus 1 which is 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 and so on right now just note that this sequence is not convergent or divergent because there are two subsequences uh, the sequence uh, subsequence of even numbers and for example take a n plus 1 or let us just denote it by so a 2n plus 1 it will be a subsequence of this which is from clearly this is a divergent sequence so just note that this sequence has this subsequences subsequence which is divergent so and this option says that every subsequence of an is convergent so this is false because we have a subsequences uh, a subsequence which is divergent now let us see the second option there is exactly one subsequence or uh, subsequence of a n which is convergent so for this option you again take this a n is equal to this and you take a to n which is a subsequence uh, subsequence of a n so it will be just 1 1 
कॉन्स्टेंट सिक्वेंस वन 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 बिकॉज ए टू एन विल बी जस्ट माइनस वन रेज टू टू एन विच इज वन एंड यू टेक द सेकेंड सब सिक्वेंस एस ए टू एन प्लस वन सो विच इज जस्ट माइनस वन रेज टू टू एन प्लस वन दिस इज माइनस वन रेज टू टू एन इन टू वन विच इज माइनस वन सो दिस इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट सब सिक्वेंस माइनस वन माइनस वन एंड सो वन नाउ दिस कॉन्वर्ज इज टू वन एंड दिस कॉन्वर्ज इज टू माइनस वन सो देर आर टू सबसिक्वेंस और सबसिक्वेंसेस ऑफ ए एल विच आर कॉन्वर्जेंट बट बट दिस ऑप्शन से इज दैट देर इज एग्जैक्टली वन सबसिक्वेंस सो दिस इज ऑल्सो फॉल्स नाउ दिस थर्ड ऑप्शन से इज दैट देर आर इनफाइनाइटली मेनी सबसिक्वेंसेस ऑफ ए एन विच आर कॉन्वर्जेंट बट फॉर दिस वी नीड अ वेरी फेमस थेरम which is bolzano weierstrass theorem so this theorem says that bolzano weierstrass theorem it says that if you have a, a sequence an which is bounded then there is or there exist a subsequence of an which is convergent that means a bounded sequence have a convergent subsequence so this is just same as the fourth option there is uh, there is a subsequence of an which is convergent so this is just from this bolzano weierstrass theorem so this is always true because we have given this an be a bounded sequence now just look at this third option this says that there are infin infinitely many subsequences so why is this true just notice that now this theorem says that the subsequence of an right so let us start with that an which is bounded so by this theorem we have a convergent subsequence of this an so let us just take that subsequence to be a n1 now this is a convergent subsequence so convergent subsequence right so and we know that a convergent sequence is bounded right so this is bounded now you apply the same theorem for this sequence so by this theorem also this sequence is bounded so by this theorem there exist a subsequence say a n2 of this sequence a n1 which is convergent so from this we get this is convergent right now you again apply the same thing to a n2 so this will also give a subsequence say a n3 which is convergent by bolzano weierstrass theorem and so on because this is bounded sequence so it will have a convergent subsequence now again this is bounded so it will have some convergent subsequence and you just go on doing like this so we will get infinitely many subsequences right because this is a subsequence of this this is a subsequence of this and so these are all subsequences of this the sequence original sequence an which was bounded so this boundedness is very important so there are infinitely many subsequences of an which are convergent this is also true so the third and fourth options are true i hope you like this video thanks a lot for watching please like share and subscribe if you find this useful and also press that bell icon to get the all updates thank you